All right, welcome back to the Nyes Fast Channel, guys. It's time to do my review of the Sun Dried Tomato. I mean, the Sandron Torino. Or if I was Kyle from DTOM Knives and Gear, I'd call it the Toronto. Um, Kyle, I'm sorry, man. I had to. No, really. The Sandron Torino. Whoa. Okay, that that was bad. Hold on. Let's let's start back off on a better foot. There we go. Okay, so the Sandron Torino. This comes by way of Rusty Knife Lover. Rusty is a loyal viewer of the channel. There you go. Made in Italy. Sandron Torino comes in this uh, slick little box. You slide it out of this one, and you've got a magnetic closure box uh, with a cutout in the uh, foam, the Sandron uh, little cloth here, a Sandron Knives um, certificate of authenticity or a uh, warranty card, I believe. Uh, and nicely done on the box. I mean, uh, pretty cool. So didn't quite shut there, but that's okay. We'll leave it for now. So really interesting looking knife, guys. I mean, this one is um, something different. Um, we all always talk about how every knife is looking the same and Every knife is the same, and this is definitely not the same. Um, so let's just talk through it like we usually do. Uh, the handle scales are just, again, incredibly different. It is red G10, but it is routed on the outside and flat on the inside, and it is thin, thin, thin uh, as far as the channel for the blade because the blade is thin. Um, the, so the routing for weight, uh, control is on the outside. It is tip up left and right reversible on the clip, a really interesting shape clip. And it is a little springy, but it, the retention is good. It is a deep carry clip with just a bit sticking out. Like, I mean, really tiny amount. It is a very slender carry in the pocket. I've even had some people tell me they carry it as a fifth pocket uh, kind of deal, but it's a little big for a fifth pocket for me at least, uh, but it's light and small and does kind of disappear. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so you do kind of feel some of that milling and uh, in your hand, but I think it actually aids in the grip. It's not, it's not a hot spot. It's not annoying. And you do have a little choil to choke up on and you have jimping that comes up where your thumb is. Um, however, and we'll get into this more, the blade is so thin that it can, if you push too hard, it's going to dig into your thumb. And I will show you, uh, if I can turn my thumb over, what I'm talking about. You can see uh, how it has dug into my thumb there. Um, it is uh, a lock, very similar. Let's see, what do they actually call this lock? Um, a recoil lock. Um, but it's very similar uh, to the shark lock, um, but different, you know, obviously thinner and smaller. And we'll talk about how to use that in a moment. Now, blade. The blade is really interesting. It's polyhedral tungsten carbide, um, which is hardened to an HRC I saw of something like 71, um, which is really crazy. But I have seen people easily be able to sharpen these. I've been talking to a viewer uh, Duke, Rising Ground with Duke, who has gone in and actually repolished his to get these uh, machining marks out. Um, actually, I kind of think the machining marks are kind of cool. When it goes through the light, look at that. Uh, Rusty was telling me about that, and I think that's cool. But he polished his to make it nice and smooth and polished, and it looks really, really good. Uh, you have the Sandra Knives logo over here. You do have thumb studs, which are really practical and nice. Uh, no other billboarding at all. And you do have a really nice sharpening choil here and a finger choil. Yay. Hey, hey. Uh, really basic looking pivot, but really well done. Black on the hardware, of course. Um, there. Now, um, really thin blade, guys. And I, I just want to emphasize that. Hold on. Give me just a second. Okay. So this is my Manix 2 Lightweight. And you see the thickness of that blade. Look at that. And I consider the, the um, Manix 2 to be a slicey guy. Well, look at the Sandrin, guys. Now, I have not, I was not um, planning to cut with this, but I have cut off camera, so I might as well cut on camera. Uh, let's just see what we get here. Okay, so 
Uh, again, the blade is a little a little short. It's definitely sharp. There we go. Um, but but just because of the shape of the blade, I tend to go off the end there. But you can see it's definitely a very sharp, very thin blade. I mean, look at how thin it is. Full flat grind all the way to the top. Um, and guys, it's only 2.3 ounces. Now, I told you I was going to tell you a little bit about the lock. The best way to close this guy is to put your hand in a normal grip and to just use the jimping, not the front. The front hurts, okay? But if you just use that jimping and pull, this guy's going to drop to your finger, and then you get it out of the way and shake it one time. Uh, really, really cool. Saw that on Stasa's video, uh, and that is the way to do this. Now, you can, if you want, you can get your fingers out of the way, and you can claw this little thing here, and it'll drop all the way. Um, you can do that. Uh, you're going to hurt your finger. Um and so in my case, I think the best way is that and then that. Um, really, really dig that. Guys, this is just a really unique knife, and it's only 2.3 ounces on a, you know, a, a three-inch blade. By the way, I didn't give you that. Uh, so the, it is 2.95 uh, on the blade length, 6.88 inches overall. Um, and the handle... Well, I guess I don't have the measurement of the handle handy. Uh, but I'm guessing, let's see, I know the um, this guy, the Manix 2 that I just had is four and a half inches. So we'll just use that. So this is probably just over four. Hey, you know what? Here we go. We'll do the old uh, measurement here. So yeah, we're just at four inches, just over four on the handle and uh, right at three on the blade. So just a really different, really cool uh, little knife, guys. I mean, I don't know. I'd like to hear what you think of it. It is made in Italy. Um, and again, it's tungsten carbide uh, and it is a sheep's foot blade. So let me know what you think in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you like uh, the video. And I uh, would love to hear a comment of what you think of this thing. And Rusty, I'm so thankful you sent this along. Uh, very much so. Because uh, I, I don't think I would have ever just like zeroed in on this uh, to pick up and, and look at. Um, sometimes I'm really glad people make me or have me look at knives that I normally wouldn't be drawn to. Because uh, this is pretty cool. Um, very cool. Now, I will tell you guys, and I haven't told you something and some of you are out there screaming at your youtube how much is this two hundred dollars okay uh knife center is what i'm looking right now uh, they do have them available it is two hundred dollars and i know that's going to immediately take some of you out of the running on this one uh it is very unique the machining that's gone into this is very unique i'm sure this is a knife that doesn't take just a few minutes to build um it's a very unique build so uh, i i mean I don't think I can complain about the price because I don't know what all went into to building it. But there you go. The Sandrin Torino. Again, give me a comment. Uh, thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please consider uh, fixing that. Uh, we have so much good stuff coming, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. And thanks so much for watching the Knives Fast channel.